second story is a bit scarier. Um, so my mom and I were out of town and it was pretty late. We were driving home at 1.30 in the morning and um, I believe we had to drop off my brother at the airport in Detroit. I believe that's what we were doing. Coming home on this highway and this highway is known to be like not very busy at night as far as cars go but it's known for like having a lot of truck drivers on the road and I don't know why I'm doing this but there's a lot of truck drivers that drive on this road. So we we're being careful and I was driving in my car obviously with a car. <laughs> um, anyways I was driving and it was pitch black there was nobody for miles except for a semi truck here and there and the next thing I know there is this body laying on the road and there's blood I swerve and slam my brakes and I just immediately got scared and my mom goes was that and then I like looked over her and I go yeah, that was a body in the road. There's a body in the road. And she goes, you gotta turn back around. I go, I know. And so, I got my cell phone and I told my brother, I texted my brother what was going on because I wanted someone to know where we were at and what was going on. And then I, so I turned the car back around, I got on the phone with 911 and I told them what was going on, told them what mile marker I was at and um, my mom was walking up to the guy while I was on the phone. I was outside of my car, but she was the one that walked up to the guy because I was still pretty young. I was so she walked up to the guy and he was bloody, but he was alive. And she said, "Okay, we have a cop. He should be there any minute." And she got off the phone with me, which, looking back at it, I th always thought that 911 like stayed on the phone with you until the cops got there, but. She didn't, I don't know why, but anyways, so I got off the phone with her, and then my brother called me, and I'm on the phone with my brother, standing by the car, and this truck's driving by really slow, this pickup truck, and there's two guys in it, and they drive up to me, and they said, did you see that guy? And I said, yeah, and he said, is he dead? And he didn't say it like, oh my gosh, is he dead? Are you okay? Do you guys need help? Um, he's like, is he dead? And when he said it, I had this really unsettling feeling. I don't know why. And I, I don't know why I said this, but this is what came out. I said, even though I was on the phone with my brother, I said, no, he's alive, but he's in really bad shape. I'm on the phone with 911 and they should be here any minute. And as soon as I said that, they didn't ask if we needed help or wanted help. He just took off, he had his lights off, and then he turned down a dirt road, and turned his uh, lights on once he went down a dirt road. It was two guys in the truck. And they, I mean, what kind of guys leave two women stranded on a highway at 1.30 in the morning with a guy next to dead in the middle of the road? Pretty shady guys. And my brother was like, who was that? And I go, I don't know. He goes, he goes you need to report them to the police. He goes, get their um, license plate. I'm like, Adam, it's too dark. They didn't even have their lights on. I can't see anything. All I could tell was the make and uh, color of the truck. That's all I could tell. So I gave that to the police and they even were like, yeah, at least she got the make and model. And they're like, yeah, that's very suspicious. And, and the guy was incoherent. He was okay. He had been beaten up and bruised pretty badly. And the, I told the cops like, what the make of the truck was and there was two guys I gave him descriptions and the cop was even like like my brother even picked up on the t the guy's tone of voice he's like Brooke that wasn't uh normal who was that what what why were they saying that like my brother even picked up on it and the cops were even like okay these guys might be suspects so really what happened was um from what we gathered I don't know a whole lot because we never got called to court or anything but um, I think the guy is okay. He seemed to be okay because he was talking once he got in the ambulance. He, uh, he was talking once he got in the ambulance, but um, from what the cop was gathering was pretty much someone had beaten the crap, the living crap out of this guy, like beaten him to death pretty much. And they left him for dead in the middle of the road hoping a semi-truck would probably drive over him and finish him off. 
and I don't know if it was those guys that came up to me and asked that. It's probably a good suspicion that it probably was. Um, and if that guy lived, I'm sure he knows who beat him up and stuff. But it was really, really scary experience. It was something I will never forget. Like just driving down this highway, nobody there. And then all of a sudden there's a bloody body right in front of you. And you're going 65 miles an hour. Um... It was a very unique experience, to say the least, um, and I'm really glad my mom was there with me because if she wasn't there, God only knows what would have happened. Um, what guys leave two women stranded in the middle of the night with a guy that's close to dead, bloody, in the middle of the highway? Not nice guys. So, I don't know if those guys were ever found. I don't know the whole story, I'm sure. The guy that got beaten up, he probably at least remembers what the guys looked like. I don't know the story. All I know is that help came and they got him and all that. And it's an experience my mom and I will never forget. And I'm so glad she was with me. I'm sad that she had to witness it. But I'm really glad that she was there with me because that would have been really scary to do by myself. And who knows, like... I don't know if those guys would have just seen one girl because they knew there was another person with me. Maybe if they seen me, they could have done something to me because I was a witness. You never know. People are crazy. There is a lot of crazy people in this world. So, um, that is my scary story. And I just want you guys to know, like, it's always good to be a good Samaritan and help people. Like, I am a firm believer in not sitting back and doing nothing. I don't. I'm a firm believer and I do not believe in sitting back and doing nothing but I also really want to encourage you especially if you're women to be smart about things when you're helping people be wise when you're helping people out and be aware of your surroundings and always have 911 on speed dial because I mean they're just a call away that's what the cops are there for 911 is there for so never hesitate to call 911 when you run into situations like that you always need help and backup and just be careful be very careful and just aware of your surroundings so that is this story time video I hope you guys enjoyed this if you like story time videos give me a thumbs up or let me know in the comments down below and I'll do some more for you guys because I have a lot of stories that I could tell you guys but um Anyways, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and God bless. Bye.